Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is that special time once again for the Jay Moore Tech Talk Show, and we'll be starting momentarily. This is the place to ask those questions about PCs, technology, problems with your iPhone, carry it to your car, and much more, including those smart devices at home and in the office that are supposed to make life easier. We welcome your questions live during our show tonight, and please help me welcome the CEO and founder of the J. Moore Connection Incorporated and the star of tonight's show, Mr. John C. Morley. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the J. Moore Tech Talk Show. My name is John, and I'm your host. And tonight, we're going to continue our conversation, actually a conclusion, part three of social media. Now, I know many of you out there have actually been following, you know, what's been going on with the news and a lot of things happening. In fact, many of you might have found out that... Uh, Actually, uh, I believe it was uh, Verizon that had purchased. Um, what was it? They had purchased um, uh, AOL. And I'm not going to get too much into that right now. But what I want to let you know is that uh, a lot of things are going to change, including Verizon's email is going to be going away. I mean, that's just how they're going to do it now, and it's going to become AOL. And there's going to be some free services still, and then there's going to be some paid services. What I understand right now is that the paid services are going to be for people that had dial-up and stuff like that. So no need to really panic that if you have and you're doing BYOA, um, bring your own access, or BYOI, bring your own internet access. Um, you don't really have to worry too much. So let's talk a little more about social media. Now, we've talked a lot about the different platforms and, you know, it's changed so much because social media is where everything is going right now. But, I mean, how many of our listeners are actually really doing social media on a daily basis? Now, if you have questions and you want to call us live during our show tonight between 9 and 10, you can call us at 973-826-0981. That's 973-826-0981. 0981 and we'll be happy to take your call here on the air so one of the ones i want to talk to you about ladies and gentlemen is instagram all right so instagram is actually pretty neat because what's going on with instagram is this is the place where people can take all kinds of pictures okay and then based on those pictures that they're taking uh they're able to do all kinds of different stuff all right so that's basically, you know, what's happening. And I think uh, the biggest challenge for a lot of people is that, you know, they don't have as many, some people don't have a smartphone and stuff like that. But, you know, I got to be very honest with you when we talk about social media, all right? So Instagram is one of my favorites. Uh, I post a video every single day on Instagram uh, regarding business. And, you know, Instagram is pretty easy to use, but there are a lot of people on Instagram I don't want to say they're unethical, but what they're really doing is they're going online, and then let's say they go to fo let's say that they go to follow you. Say, okay, great, they followed me. So based on them following me, then I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to follow them. Now that sounds pretty pretty straightforward, right? Very very easy. But now here's what happens. So you get five people, ten people. It's like, oh great, they're all following me. So let me follow them too, right? I mean, that sounds like a really good, really good idea. The problem is one or two start to unfollow you, then the others unfollow you. So what these people are doing is it's kind of like a catch. They're actually following you, and then they figure you're not going to have the time to figure out how to unfollow them. So what do they do? They've got followers. Now, there are utilities and things you can use, but it's really unethical. So the best way to get followers on Instagram, to be very honest with you, is to post original, good quality, inspiring content. That's really the secret. If you're going to take stuff from other people, don't plagiarize and stuff like that, or if you're going to take other information and you're going to put it up there and share it, that's fine. But if you claim something is your own, then it better be your own. It better not be anybody else's, okay? That's really, really, uh, that's really, really important. And I think what you're going to find is that it's basically... 
you know, it's a social platform, and you share pictures, and mostly people share video. I mean, that's really what it's what it's about. So when you launch Instagram, you have something at the top that basically says your story, and then if you have anybody else who are following, you'll see their story. So a story is a it's a quick little video cap of you, who you are, and kind of gives people an idea, you know, why they should follow you. Uh, that's pretty much, you know, kind of like your little, like your call tag, if you will. And uh, especially if you haven't posted any videos, that's the place where people are going to be seeing that kind of information. Now, the thing about it is that when you deal with Instagram, so you have the story at the top, you have the little uh, camera icon at the top left of the screen, you have that pretty easy, uh, pretty simple. And this works on an Android as well as it works on the iPhone. I have an iPhone. And then on the right side... Uh, to the Instagram word. So on the left, you have the camera icon. Uh, in the middle, you have the word Instagram. And then on the far right, you have a little, um, like almost looks like a little paper airplane. So you will you can get in touch with that. And basically what that does is it lets you to communicate with any previous direct messages. They're kind of think of them like emails, but there isn't really email in Instagram or in Twitter. They call them direct messages. Uh, so that's where that comes from. There's a plus sign there. And those people... We're in a list, and all the people in the list are all the people that you actually can direct message. Those are people that you're following, okay? Uh, actually, people, I should say, that are, excuse me, that are following you. If they're not following you, then you're not able to direct message them. So right now, there happens to be a picture up here with two little cute dogs. So um, one of the ways to stay active on Instagram is to stay social. So like I told you, there's a little heart there. There's a little... Um, uh, like a little, uh, let's say, like, almost like a little ellipse or like a circle, kind of like what you'd see from like a you know cartoon character, you know, like what's coming out of his mouth, and they put it above him. This is just like a little balloon kind of with that little point at the bottom. So if I touch the little heart, it goes ahead and it likes the post. So liking is one way to stay social. It's not the be-all, end-all way. If you find something that you really like and you want to comment on it, you can find the picture, for example, here they have this one has a lot of there's a lot of dogs on this one particular right now because of the way something somebody's posting something. Um, they have uh, let's see here. There's some looking to see if there's anything out here, if there's any kind of anything I, that I want to comment on. So I'm looking at this really. Good, OK, so here's a real good one. It says never give up on your dreams. I think that is absolutely amazing because, you know, if you haven't. Um, quit, you haven't failed, okay? Um, you haven't failed because you haven't quit. As long as you keep going, you're working on your dreams. So I'm going to say that I like that. I'm going to love that, I like it. And then where it has the picture here, I'm just going to use my phone. I'm going to use the little microphone button here. And I'm going to say, cool post, really agree with that motivational uh, quote. And I'm using the um, using the voice dictation here, so that went right there. And now that person knows that I commented about it. So this is how Instagram works. So there are a couple things. Now, there's some etiquette when we talk about um, Instagram. Now, you're going to see things that say, like, certain restaurants or certain uh, hotels might say something and then sponsored. So a sponsored thing is really good. Uh, that's when somebody pays for something. Um, advertising on Instagram is relatively expensive because they charge you for each time it goes through. Uh, there's another. There's there's quite a few other ones on here. And again, you can look through them. What you will find is that if you're following people that you're really honestly integrating with, and you're communicating back and forth, that's good. If you follow thousands of people or hundreds of people and you really can't collaborate. Um, the good thing about Instagram is that you always want to have the number of followers, okay? Those are the people that are following you higher than the number you're following, okay? And um, the way you get to that is really easy. All you do is you go on the far right side of your screen at the bottom. You click on the type on the click on the little person, and then you'll see the name of your account at the top. You'll see the number of posts that you have made. You'll see the number of followers that you have. Okay, those are the people that are following you. And then you have following the people that you're following. So if you click on followers, you have all the people that are following you. And then you have next to that the word fo following button. 
If the following button is, uh, let's say, not blue and it's just white, that means you're already following that person. If you click on that, it'll have a little button. It'll have a little dialogue at the bottom popping up saying, uh, are you sure you want to unfollow this person? Following. Um, so, again, if you want to unfollow somebody on your following screen, you can click and click on the appropriate button next to it, which will be not blue. It'll be white, and then um, that person would be unfollowed. So you have a chance in Instagram to actually make up a little blurb, if you will, about who you are and why people should follow you. Uh, this is something because a lot of people don't, let's say, pay attention to the R story. They just don't pay attention to it. So in Instagram, you can actually have that little um, section up there. You can put your website on there, tell what you're about and stuff like that. Now, on the top, you'll see here you're going to see uh, there's actually uh, one, two, three, four. So right now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're, they're nine little, uh, if you will, squares. So three, three, and three. If you click on it, it shows the, uh, basically all the posts. So I have nine posts on the page. If I go to the next one, it actually shows things in, um, it shows basically my timeline in uh, my last posts. I go to the third one, and those are photos of you. If, if, if when people tag you in photos, they'll appear here if, if, uh, if people are tagging you. And then on the far right, um, these are things that you've saved, okay? Um, you know, you, you, can, you can actually un, you can unsave stuff. I mean, that's, that's perfectly fine. But those are only things that, that, that you've basically, you know, that you've, that you've, you've saved. So um, you can go to a picture, and then you can unsave it. And then when you go back there, you can unsave it again to other ones. And that's just that. And the way you save something is really easy. All you do is you go to whatever it is that you're looking at. There's a little flag next to it. If you hit the flag, uh, then it saves it to your collection. That's how that works. It's really simple, really, really easy to do. So that's how that works. That's all accessed under the people, uh, under the person category there. And um, the most important thing that I can tell you about. Um, Instagram is that, you know, you can link it to other accounts like your Facebook accounts. Uh, you can link it to other contacts. You can look at certain story settings. Uh, for example, do you want to hide stories from certain people or do you want everyone to see them? I would think you'd want everyone to see them. Do you want to save shared photos? Yes or no. Do you want to edit your profile? Do you, do you have any block users? Uh, if they were, they would be there. Um, do you want to change your push notifications, such as uh, from everyone, from people I follow, off? You can change the settings for how it notifies you. Like when, I like to know when somebody likes something or comments. I like to know that. Generally, when I post something, I do tend to get a few likes and uh, another follow or two off of that. So that's generally how it works. You know, people that are following you in droves when you do things like follow me or follow for follow, those are nice. But the problem is those people are actually fake, and they really are not there for your content. They're there because they're hoping to use you to be a follower. And um, it, it's okay, but the problem is, is that if you really aren't going to be social with these people, you're going to have a big problem. And you're going to have this, uh, let's say... Uh, wing of people that really, really don't have any interest in what it is you're doing. Uh, again, if anybody has questions about uh, social media, they can call us here during the show at 973-826-0981, and we'll be happy to answer your question on the air. So uh, that's a little bit about you know how that works. Um, I think I think it's got a, it's a pretty neat little um, app. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that when you actually record a video or you take a picture, mostly you're going to do a video, you have one minute. That's all you have in the, um, in the video. You have one minute. You have to be within the one minute. Sometimes I take one or two takes. Maybe you'll make a mistake during the take. Maybe uh, a car will get in the way of your video or maybe something will happen. A uh, dog will walk in front of you, whatever it is. Uh, so you have to retake. So sometimes you have to retake um, your shoots. So that's how that works. When you take a video or a picture, it's very important that you hashtag it properly. What's a hashtag? And that's a really good question. A hashtag is nothing more than a way that it actually identifies the information. 
But listen, ladies and gentlemen, I know Brian's giving me a, a signal right now, so we got to go to a quick break. You stay where you are because we'll be right back after this quick break. Computers slow at your home or office. Pop-ups appearing, pairing iPhones to cars, setting up smart devices like thermostats. Technology was meant to make life easier. We know technology, and we have a passion for helping people with theirs. Connect to the JMOR Connection now, jmor.com, or call us toll-free at 877-767-5667. Mention code JRC001. Receive 50% off your first hour of service. New clients only, please. jmor.com now. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the J Moore Tech Talk Show, Thursday nights, 9 p.m., right here on the Starcom Radio Network. You know, so we've been talking about social media, you know, and everyone just thinks, you know, that you're going to hire an intern and they're going to spend so many hours of their day and they're going to get you this great big following in just a few days. It does not work like that, okay? They have to be engaged. So people a lot of times will hire um, someone at a college to be their social media director. Uh, usually they'll be their marketing intern or something. And in theory, it sounds great. But I have to be honest with you. If you're not putting in the time, and you got to be putting in the time, okay? Uh, I'm not talking about you know, putting in 30 minutes a week. I'm talking about you should be putting in a few hours a week. So that means you should be putting in at least 15 to 30 minutes a day. If you're not doing that and you're doing it all on Friday, well, you're not that social. You're not really interacting with the people. And I think that's the problem because, you know, a lot of people use social media. You know what they use it for? They use it to push product. I am not a big believer of that because I think if you're going to push product on social media, you're taken away from it. Now, if you're using it to push a product and say, hey, this is what we're about and, you know, get some feedback or some comments about it, that's great. But if you're just trying to say, hey, you know, we're selling widgets today and um, we've got them available in red, green, black, yellow, orange, pink, brown, purple, indigo blue, turquoise, teal, I mean, okay, I know this sounds stupid, but the thing is this, if you're going to use social media just to be an advertising board for things that you sell, it's not going to work. You have to engage your audience and then give them things that are going to make them want to keep following you. They like to follow people that have good posts. Now, something I've also found is that sometimes I'll make a similar post, but I'll get other people that'll like it. Why? Because it's a different time. It's a different day, <laughs> you know, and uh, I'll get somebody totally different that'll follow it. I don't always get people right in my backyard that follow me. Now, I always want people in my backyard, obviously, right? So you have to hashtag things properly. So, for example... We're actually doing an event uh, in in uh, just a, about a week or two, May 24th. We're doing an event we're launching. And so we hashtagged Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, and Kinelon, New Jersey, okay? We hashtag things like computers, computer repair. Now, if you just go there and you just type things out, that's not hashtagging. You hit pound and then you start typing, and then you'll see them pop up in the list. If your hashtag does not appear in that list, you didn't hashtag it. You just add a word, okay? It actually won't let you go on to the next word unless you have a pound and you've selected a hashtag. So that's something important to know. So hashtags are how people find you. So, for example, if I wanted NJ uh, events, I could type NJ events, and it would find it for me on uh, my Twitter or on my Instagram. So that's how that works. It's really interesting because you have to find the right hashtags. One way to do this is you could look and see, you know, what other events are coming up that you want to be classified with. Maybe there's another networking event that you want to appear like they appear. There's nothing wrong with using the same hashtags. That's perfectly legal. Just don't steal their content. It's one thing if you want to say, hey, you know, uh, this, this, they're doing this thing, you know, we're doing something similar. That's okay. But you don't want to steal their content and say, hey, you know, um, you know, we're doing this. No, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't go over well. So 
we're talking a little about Instagram. And as we talk about Instagram, again, what I want you to understand is that it's a commitment, okay? It's a commitment that you have to choose to follow. And if you don't choose to follow and be dedicated into this commitment, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to have followers, all right? So there's two ways, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, that you can get followers. One way is you can actually have the person, you know, you can find, first of all, you can go out there and like things that other people like, and you can comment, and then they may follow you uh, because you followed them or because you like something or you made a great comment that they thought was good, and that'll get them to follow you. What I found a lot of times is I will compliment a business or tell them, gee, that's a great idea or something. And something I thought that was really noteworthy, that was really going to make them look good in front of their peers, and they don't follow us. I can't explain to you why people follow and don't follow, but it has to do with uh, a social premise. And that is, are you someone that fits into their uh, makeup? That's really what it's about. If you're not someone that fits into their actual makeup, then they're not going to follow you. If you follow them and they follow you, they're going to unfollow you, like, immediately, okay, like within a day or so. And again, they figure that you're not going to remember it, and you're just not going to worry about it. But really, it's a tactic. People do this, and I'm telling you, don't do it. Because if you get all these followers, and then they start unfollowing you, you're going to be unhappy. So why don't you just work from the ground up? You don't have any followers right now, probably, because you're just starting, and there's nothing wrong with that. You need to develop good quality content. So maybe content about your business. How does it help other people? We do something called the Community Give Back, where we actually record local businesses. Now, we sometimes get business from it. Sometimes we don't. But we don't do it for that premise. We do it for the, for the point to say, hey, this is a business in our area. Uh, we talk about social media and how we can help them with social media. And how a lot of companies out there rip people off for social media and they really don't do a good job. So I tell people from the get-go, if you want to have a good social presence, it's not just dumping money. It's having someone that can understand what it is your goals are and then coming up with what your mission's going to be with social media and how that's going to reflect you in the industry or in, in the social community world. So let's say... You know, you never had a social presence, and you just started um, a Twitter, and you started a um, a uh, Instagram account. Well, you always want one to link to the other, so your Instagram will post to your to your Twitter, etc., and to your Tumblr, respectively. What happens is if you don't have any followers, as soon as you make your first post, and as soon as it's very compelling. You'll usually get followers. Sometimes the first day, it might take two days, but you'll get people starting to follow you. Then once they see you're commenting on other people, they see that you're active and that you're not just a taker. Because one thing I got to tell you is that if you are a taker and you don't give back to the social community, then you're not going anywhere, okay? Um, the social community is a very close niched community where if you're one that's going to help the community and they see that they are going to look to first see are you somebody that follows on a regular basis or do you just follow because you know you're you're looking for something tomorrow i follow because i create the social presence that i'm there i'm not looking for the follow tomorrow i'm looking to build that relationship up so they can say hey you know that's an account I want to follow. I like that kind of content. You know, they're very genuine. Uh, they speak about things, and I like following them. And that's what it's about. You know, you could talk about what's in the news. Uh, you can even be controversial if you want. I just caution you that if you're going to include anybody, make sure that you have a media release or there is the potential of you getting sued because – you are not going to be paying that person, and if something gets said. So you just want to cover your, your rear on those things, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So again, you know, you can look at stuff, and uh, you can go through it. And most of the people will agree that you don't want to make more than one, two posts a day max. But one is usually the standard. If you have something really important to say, a second post is okay. But another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to post more than two times a day. 
and you don't want to post the same thing. I've had this happen. I'm not going to mention who, but there's been some real estate companies. And I know they're zealous. I know they got to sell the house for a few million dollars. But look, it's all about ethics, right? And, you know, we can't use a channel just like we can't spam with email because people get all annoyed and it's, it's disrespectful. Same thing goes for social media, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we can't just start blasting out that a house is for sale five times. I mean, that, that is really disrespectful. You're going to lose followers, and you're going to get a lot of nasty comments. So that's really um, – so here's another one I like. Uh, it says, the past has no power over the present. I agree, and I like that. Uh, there's another one here that I'm just looking at here. And uh, this was from a real realty company. I'm not going to tell you who it is. but So they were just telling you about their average followers, how they're doing, and, and what they're doing. And they're trying to build their brand by using their company, if you're a realtor, to, um, to, uh, to get your followers. So that's you know, how that works. But you see, a lot of these companies out there that get your followers, whether you're online, whether you're using a Fiverr, whatever it is, these people – are not really following you because of you or because of your content. They're following you because basically they have these accounts and they've done things illegally. Now, I'm not going to get into how to do that because that's, that's really unethical. But, you know, there are ways that people do that. And hopefully Instagram and Twitter find out about it and they, and they shut them down. I like this one quote, and I definitely like this, and um, it comes from Walt Disney. If you can dream it, you can do it. And uh, today I was having an interesting conversation with someone, and not to get too off on the tangent, but we always learn more than technology in this show. That's just kind of a benefit. The law of attraction, right? Uh, Earl uh, Nightingale Conant said, you know, what we think about, we bring about, Okay. And uh, another person said a while back, you know, we change our words, we change our thoughts. We change our thoughts, we change our mind. If we really do change our mind, we will, in fact, improve the quality of our life, and that is what we want today for ourselves and our loved ones, right? But, you know, the law of attraction is one of those things where if you don't see what you want today, people just don't put more energy into that. And uh, myself being an engineer, I mean, this is going to probably blow a lot of your minds. We really don't have... A um, Nothing in our world really exists. Everything, if we were to look at it under a microscope, would actually be vibrating at a very high frequency. And uh, I know what you're saying, but it is, it is about that because, you see, nothing in our world is actually still. It's made up of molecules and atoms. And... Um, Everything in our world starts as a thought, but not to get too into this. But the point I was making is that, you know, if we put energy into something and we keep thinking about something, what we want is going to manifest. It's just a lot of times people will kick themselves in the foot because just before it's about to manifest, they say, oh, and say, say something and they negate it. And the universe comes back and says, OK, you guess you don't want that. So you have to watch your language, watch what you're saying. Uh, I always say the company you uh, stay around is the people that you're going to, uh, basically the influence that's going to have over you. So if they're great people, good. If they're people that bring you down, then don't hang around those people. But again, I'm not trying to go into a whole social thing, but I just wanted to let you know that energy is more than just in technology. Our whole world is energy. And again, I could do a whole thing on this, but this is a technology show. I may go into that on another show when I talk about how technology affects things that we bring about. And I'll talk about some the medical devices and we'll have some fun with that. Other things I wanted to share with you is we have some guests coming in. We have a golf show coming up uh, not, too, not too long from now. And we also are going to have a, uh, another show coming about some devices that have helped people in their quest for walking. So we're really trying to bring some great guests on. We're trying to really get in there with technology to let you understand that, you know, technology is not just a keyboard. It's not just a screen. It's not just a Fitbit, okay? It's not just a phone. It's not just a smartphone. It's not just a light bulb, okay? Um, it is the air we breathe, okay? 
it is the atmosphere that we're in. I mean, we already know that Wi-Fi, uh, you know, transmits through the environment, the atmosphere, right? There's no wires. But it happens our world is full of technology, whether we're talking medically, whether we're talking socially, uh, whether we're talking, like I said, uh, more on a, a business level. There's technology there. Or maybe we're talking about technology and how it can help you know, save our lives or how it can help protect us. And um, I think that's really an interesting point is that technology, because of its autonomousness, the fact that it can automatically start to do thinking like artificial intelligence and stuff like that, I think we're going to see technology is going to give us greater power. But with greater power comes more responsibility to us as the programmers and the ones being responsible. Well, listen, I've got to take another quick break. You stay right where you are because we'll be right back after this quick break. For IT services and data destruction, the J. Moore Connection should be your direction. Engineer technology to grow your business. Our custom solutions are at your service. J. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, like I said, technology is not just in the world. It's actually here at the radio station and broadcasting with certain software and hardware and mixers. So technology is all around us. You know, technology isn't just something that's digital. We can have analog technology, and it's still technology. I mean, when we think about technology in a very broad sense, it's basically taking any type of electronic components and uh, applying some type of juice toward them. And whether it be a circuit board or uh, whether it be some type of diodes, uh, whether it be some type of resistors, it's all technology, okay? And that is what makes what I do every day really interesting because, you know, it's not just going to be, you know, fixing a computer or deciding what we have to put in the computer or how to make a computer better or does it pay to upgrade a computer or does it pay to completely replace it. I mean, there's technology to alarm systems. You all know that. There's technology we sit on the golf course, and we're going to talk about that in a, a couple and some shows from now. We have a great host coming in. His name is Jason, actually a good friend of mine and actually a, a, a very good golf pro who actually I get to play golf with a couple times a year, and he actually is a – Really great golfer, and he has a lot of insight to a uh, a golf course we're going to be talking to down in um, actually uh, uh, in Florida, uh, not far from uh, from Naples, Florida. So we're going to be talking to him, and I think that's going to be interesting. And we're going to be really working, especially after the summer, to get guests in that are going to really uh, how can I say unlock things that you know you might have had that little wonder about. And that's really where I'm trying to go with this show is not just answer your tech questions, but, you know, really dive into technology and find out, you know, what's making that tick. You know, sometimes maybe we'll do an unboxing of something and we'll take a look at something and I'll give you my personal review or my benchmark test. You know, many of you know, uh, myself being an engineer for many years, you know, a, a company that has a great name does not impress me. I'm not going to mention any, but there's one that starts with a C in the alphabet, and uh, they were very good for a long time, and now I won't buy any products or recommend their products. The company, basically, and I'm not going to mention their name, they are a real giant when it comes to marketing. That's really the big thing. And what they do is they specialize in acquiring companies to get into business areas that they really don't have the leverage to get into. So what do they do? They have a lot of resources. They buy them, okay? The thing that happens with this, this company and companies like it, they get involved with stuff that really is way off of their benchmark portfolio for what they were designed for. And they start making their products dirt cheap. And now you're probably saying, oh, that's a great thing. No, it, it's really a bad thing because that means that instead of using, let's say, for argument's sake, a widget that would hold the door closed, you know, really well and be lasting for a long time, that widget that holds the door closed or hinge might only last maybe six months or a year. 
Uh, and I'm just giving you some simple analogies, but I mean, if they if they used a uh, piece of software, which they do, they use firmware. What I found is that the firmware that's in there is many, many years old. It's not upgraded, and um, the device is plain off. They're, they're horrible. <laughs> and again, I'm not going to give you their name, but they are the third level of the alphabet. I I'm just not happy with them. I, I know, and what really kind of put me over the fence with them, I'm going to be very honest with you, I had a situation um, we had with a client, and um, it was an NBD, Next Business Day Replaced, and do you know – that we called them up and, you know, they gave us their whole spiel about how they would do this and do that. And I said, that's wonderful. And I said, you know, don't try to, you know, smoke smoke and mirrors me or, or you know, snow job me. Uh, all I want is the dot, dot, dot replaced because it's within warranty and it's a business class series. And they said, um, oh, okay, yeah, we'll be happy to help you with that one. I'm like, oh, no, I'm dealing with someone that's going to help me with that one. And when they start telling me that they're going to help me with that one and this one, and they're helping me to help me with one like that, and I'm like, oh, boy, just hang up. But no, <laughs> I stayed on the phone patiently with them, and I said, this is what I need. And they said, oh, I'm very sorry about that, and they called me by my first name, Mr. John. And I said, uh, we really need it to be overnighted. Well, here's how we work, sir. Uh, on that one, here's what we can do for you. Uh, we can go ahead and send you another one once you send us that one back in. I'm like, are you kidding me? No, no, that's how we work. Well, how about if I give you a credit card and you crush it? Oh, no, no, we can't do that. You ship us that one, we repair it, we send it back to you. You just told me you'd ship me another one. No, 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 we're going we're gonna to repair that one and send it back to you. So I said to the gentleman, I said, well, what do I do with the client that's down? I said, we already got them a new blah, blah, whatever it was. And uh, I said, you know what I'm going to do, sir? I said, because this is not worth my time, my aggravation, and it's not worth the money. I'm going to take the blah, blah, blah device because I'm not telling you what it is. And I'm going to just walk over to my to our recycle pile when we do our electronics recycling. And I'm going to make sure it gets green recycled. And I'm going to make sure that our company never buys anything from your company again. Oh, okay, sir. Very sorry you feel that way. Yeah, they really don't care. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of these tech companies out there, they're marketing geniuses, okay? But they don't know technology. There's another company out there that's the uh, fourth letter of the alphabet. And they seem to make these products that are very inexpensive. People buy them because why? They have a great marketing arm. And everybody loved the story about how they get started and things like that. They got started. But, you know, the real challenge is they're, they're, the things that they're building, they can't support expansion. But they have a wonderful uh, brand name because they had a story. Okay? So is it enough, ladies and gentlemen, just to have a story? And the fact that you want to be something good, is that enough to put you on the map? Apparently so. Uh, I'd rather get on the map for doing something that's really noteworthy and something that is going to that I'm going to be proud of and that other people are going to be proud of from generations to come. Not just because I had a unique story of starting in a garage. I, I'm, I'm just being honest here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you know, you, you a lot of times don't see the honest side of me, but, you know, when we're talking about technology... I don't recommend things uh, in my everyday uh, you know, job that I do to just say, hey, they're great at marketing, so let's buy that product. For me to recommend something, I have to believe in that product myself. I really do. And if I can't believe in it, if I don't see it's gone through my own benchmark tests, I don't care what tests have gone through. I don't care what labs they've run. All these labs, they're all biased. They pay the money. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not nice to say, but these different labs, they pay the money. And even some of these national customer service awards, they don't earn these awards. No. They basically, they, they give them a fee, a registration fee. It's not $100. It's quite a bit of money. And then they magically get awarded this blah, blah, blah award. That's how it works. But uh, don't get me started on that. So, I, I, again, I wanted to just be honest with you. And, you know, if anybody does call in here and they do mention a company name, uh, I'm going to say that I'm not going to mention the name and say um, anything bad about the name because I don't want to do that. But what I will tell you is that um, I may say something like, you know, that may not be a product that I choose. That's all I'm going to say. And that's my choice. Okay, that is my choice. But I will tell you that in over the years I've done this, 
in the beginning, people used to spend so much money on these trade shows. They'd wine and dine us. They'd invite us out to them. And I said to the guys, you know, don't waste your time and your money inviting us out to these lavish shows in Las Vegas and other places around the world. Just give us a lower price. You know, we don't want to waste a whole week. You know, now you've got us as a captive audience in your uh, place, and we have to listen to what you have to say. And I call it a brainwashing session because I go right up to them like, you know, well, why are you doing that? And they're like, well, because that's where we're going. I said, but why are you even talking to us about that? You know yourself that's going to be discontinued next quarter. Well, we don't. Yes, I just talked to someone today, and they said it's going to be discontinued. Oh, well. So, you know, it's like, can we milk these people for a little bit? I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, when a company out there, whether you're small or large, and you decide to just stop caring or stop supporting something because you think it's just not going to make good sense for business, okay, don't sell them anymore, but support what's out there and at least give them some type of a, uh, how can I say, give them some type of a, of an upgrade plan that's not going to break their bank, you know? If they buy something for five grand, don't make them spend twenty five thousand because oh, you have to buy the Enterprise series. I mean, come on, you know. And this this is the challenge. And then they throw on these programs. Well, you know, you got to be this certified, that certified. You know, ladies and gentlemen, certifications don't impress me either. Um, I picked up quite a few of my time, but they really don't impress me because all they do is they lock in job security for you with one particular vendor. If the company stops using that vendor, guess what happens? Your whole plan and everything you worked on is, is for naught. But getting back to social media, I know we took a little bit of a, of, a, of a tangent there. Social media is definitely here to stay. And if you can choose to use social media responsibly and you can cultivate your audience get them to follow you, get them to like you, get them to share your information. Social media can be great, it can be viral, it can blow up, it can be wonderful. What I can tell you, though, is that most people in business that deploy social media don't do it right. They push their products in social media. They tell them, other people that you know, they, they don't ask for opinions about a product. They literally say, well, gee, this is a product we have, and uh, we have it available for order. Not, this is a product we have for this purpose, and uh, what are your thoughts on it? You know, would, some, would you order a product like this, or would you look for something different? Or what do you think of the price tag? Those are the kinds of things you share on social media. Social media, ladies and gentlemen, is like a very shrunken down version of, of a focus group. You probably all know what focus groups are. You go for a taste test. It could be food. It could be what have you. And these companies from food companies to drug companies, they – and I'm not talking about the ones where you're becoming a kidney pig. I'm talking about just where they pay you for your opinion for maybe how packaging looks, uh, your personal preferences, how you buy, etc. And that's what it's about. So when you use social media for that premise – and you get those details, you are getting great value, okay? What you're not getting, though, is a face-to-face -face collaboration. So the hard part about social media is the person that you're collaborating with really giving you the truth, or are they just giving you what all their peers or everybody else is going with? So that's my problem with social media. I don't know if I trust it enough to form an educated opinion off of it to help me make marketing decisions or promotional decisions, just being honest. I think it could go that way down the road. You know, I think Twitter is a little bit harder for that because Twitter, it's a feed. Instagram, you know, you, you can look at Instagram pretty easily, and if you follow not too many people, you can, you can stay active on Instagram and you can really do some great stuff. But again, just remember its purpose. Instagram is designed to share video. Um, it's designed to share, uh, designed to share pictures. I mean, that's what it's designed for, right? And if that's what we're doing, then that's fine. 
But if you just share stuff and you don't hashtag it, you might as well just take the stuff and just delete it and not give it to anybody. So you've got to make sure that you find an audience. So that's the hard part. So sometimes maybe you'll go to uh, find other groups. You can share posts where you can at call out them. Like in um, Twitter, you can ha- you cannot hashtag, but you can at symbol and then their name of their account. And then they'll be mentioned. It's called a mention, and it shows up in your profile. And then they might say, oh, gee, that's great. And they might retweet it, which is what you'll hope if it's, if it's Twitter. But I want to be honest with you. You don't get business by just going up there and creating an Instagram account, okay? I um, I know somebody, um, again, I'm not going to mention a name for, for reasons you don't want to do that on the air. I know someone, I've known them for, for quite a while. And this one particular person told me to go on Instagram and, you know, create all these things and it creates you a ton of business. And I said to myself, you know, it's not going to create you a ton of business. What it does do is it promotes your reputation. So if somebody was on the fence about using you, okay, and they want to have some assurance to what you've done, your experiences, that's going to push them over the fence. Or if somebody's looking for what you do, that's going to let them inquire and make you be run of the, one of the final running candidates. I don't feel that social media is going to just downright make the sale happen by that first contact. Not going to happen. Social media is like a peer referral. That's what social media is because it's coming from another, another person, somebody they know or maybe someone in the world that they don't know. And the thing about social media I find that's kind of interesting is that it keeps changing. You know, you get people in social media that, you know, they want to tell you about their family, what happened with their family, what trips they want to. And that's great. And that's a wonderful purpose for Twitter and, and Instagram. It's great. But there's a whole other arena out there, which we're going to see open up even wider, is the Instagram and using these for business. And you have to kind of, you know, train your clients to use your customers for business. Maybe you have to reward them. Because, again, let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, people are busy. And just asking somebody to write a referral for you, even if they're happy, that can be something that's like pulling teeth, right? So if you can get people to do this, or if you've already got people, your demographic already Twittering or already into social media, that's half your battle. If your audience is not using social media yet, well, that's another problem that you're going you're gonna to face. But if you are uh, an expert on your social media channel and other people see you as an expert and you collaborate back and forth, that's great. I mean, that's what it's about, YouTubing, um, you know, Instagram. I mean, that's what it's about. And if you can do those kinds of things, then you pretty much have a good start. So how long should it take you to build a social presence with, let's say, Instagram? Well, I told you Twitter takes a while. Okay, it really does. Instagram, if you just started tomorrow, you probably would have some good traction in about one to two months. Okay? And that's what somebody doing it every day. I mean, being – and that's assuming that you have good quality content, not that, hey, you know, we're in the business and we fix glass for cars. I just took that as an example. Uh, That's not going to do it. Maybe you can put some funny stories in there about things that happen. Uh, maybe you can say how you know you really helped this person because it was still out of warranty. You could do all kinds of stuff, but think about real stuff that people would go through. And when you can tell that complicated story in one minute, you are going to get followers. You're going to get respect. And eventually, you're going to become a king into that in that arena. But again, it doesn't happen over time. Now, one thing I want to caution you on, ladies and gentlemen, it takes a while to build a social presence. You can crush it in a matter of minutes or seconds. Just like it can take years to build a relationship between yourself and a friend, a spouse, significant other, etc. You can crush that relationship in 30 seconds or a minute, right? It takes a long time to build trust, but if you do something wrong... That trust is just, it's just gone, right? It's gone right out the window. So same thing with social media. As long as you understand and you're cognizant about what you're saying, what you're commenting on, again, 
Don't use it to use uh, foul words. Uh, you should never use it, especially if you're using it in business. You should never use it to share any type of X-rated content. I think I mentioned to you before that you can actually have a, a setting in there that you know tells, uh, warns you on that. And if you are one that does it, you can turn this on so people know that you always send that kind of content when you, when you send stuff. So it's a social responsibility. That's really what it comes down to. And if you can choose to be socially responsible, then I think you'll do well with social media. You want to take a premise. Let's say, for example, you're a glass company. Maybe you want to tell people about your story while you got into the glass business for just one minute. And then after that, you hashtag all the appropriate things, and then you tell a story like, you know, hey, we had a client come in this week, and uh, they were going through a bridge. And as they're passing a bridge, this thing dropped. Now, that may seem funny, but that costs blah, blah, blah. So you can tie it into different things. And there's lots of stuff that you can tie into that. I mean, if you want, you could tie into other businesses. So there's lots of ways that you can help. I always recommend doing something like Jay Moore does, which is called a give back. So a give back is a way that you actually have a separate um, channel on your, let's say, on your YouTube. But we do it on our, um, on our Instagram as well, which is just part of the same channel, where we will actually take something and we will video a store, etc., outside. And we'll do it with a premise, maybe talking about one of our services, telling them all about the good things about that business, but saying, hey, you know, this business doesn't currently use our services, but, you know, if they did, it would get them on the map. You know, they'd have a bigger presence. So I know I was talking to a gentleman just last week at a networking event, and he has an oil company uh, that actually does mobile oil changes. Pretty cool. And I said to the guy, I said, you know, I said, you know, you'd be a great advertiser for our network. I said, but not only that, I said – you're a very unique business, and you don't just change oil on standard cars. You change them on regular cars up to a couple hundred thousand dollar cars. So that is something important, and they're all mobile. And I thought that was a unique kind of business. But that's a kind of business, you know, I find accounting, changing car oil, that's something very personal to you, just like going to a doctor. And you really want to know that you're making the right choice before you actually go and do that. So I, I hear you when people want to do their research. I get it. Believe me. If you can use social media to help you and provide people feedback on you know how you do something and you can get the media releases from your clients, that's a great way to use for testimonials. That's a great way to get other people to say, hey, you know, I got a similar problem. Wow, he helped that person. I bet they could help us. That's what it's about. See, it's all about telling your complicated story in one minute and making it seem easy. It is believable. It is true. And making them making it sound like, you know, we can help you the same way. And see, when people see this and they see how special you treated someone, this is what's going to make social media open the doors to say, wow, I went to XYZ and they did this, 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 and this for me or – yeah, I know. And then Jim told told my my brother in law about that, and now we went there too. And this, and then before you know it, it dominoes, right? So you know, we always hear about the bad stories, right? When people aren't happy. Well, what I always say is, we want to catch people doing something good. And if you do something that is above and beyond your call of duty, you're going to get referrals. If you just do your job where you just turn the switch on or turn the switch off. That's not getting you referrals. You need to go above and beyond. You need to exceed the client's expectation. And I will be honest with you. There are a lot of businesses out there that do not want to do that, especially the worker that they're paying by hour, and they just want to do the job A, B, and C every single time, all 10 steps exactly the same way. The niceties to them are something that they really don't want to get involved with or even bother with. So I know we've covered a lot here. This is our final take right now on social media. It's part three. And I hope that you'll understand that before you decide to delve into a social media campaign, you can always reach out to us at the J Moore Connection, and we have some great plans. And, you know, there are a lot of things that you can do yourself, but don't just hire somebody online that says they're going to do postings for you for $5, and you don't have any clue about what they do. OK, because you've got to make sure that they're going to do things ethically and that they're not going to get your account banned. 
because all you need to do is have an account banned and now you got to get that fixed and now you got people that are looking at you and your accounts banned and that makes you look really really bad well listen ladies and gentlemen i know this has been a great show i hope that uh you have enjoyed it as much as i have and i hope that you know when you're choosing to use social media for whatever you're going to do that you're going to choose to use it responsibly I'm John, and you've been listening to the Jay Moore Tech Talk Show. Have a wonderful week, and everyone will see you next week. From all of us at the Jay Moore Connection Incorporated, we'd like to thank you for listening tonight and invite you to join us again next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to tell your friends, colleagues, and associates about the Jay Moore Tech Talk Show. We're here every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and we're taking your calls live right on our show. If you missed any of our shows, you can visit jmor.com, and under social area, you can actually listen to previously recorded episodes. We'll see you next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for listening, and have a great week.